Hello students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we're going to discuss measurement error in an explanatory variable. This is a bigger problem. Let's denote x1 star as the variable of interest and x1 as the imprecise measure of x1 star. Let the population regression function be y equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x1 plus u and e equals x1 minus x1 star. Let's let let's denote e1 equals x1 minus x star. Let's write down some assumptions to frame our analysis. First, we're going to assume that the expected value, the mean of e1 is 0. Not too controversial. And 2, we are going to assume that u is uncorrelated with x1 star and x1. So that the expected value of y given x1 star and x1 is equal to the expected value of y given x1 star. So this means that x1 does not affect y after we have controlled for x1 star. If, let's see, the properties of OLS will further depend on one of two uh, opposing assumptions. So we have two more and we will have either one of these uh, two assumptions. So we're going to label these 3A and 3B. 3A is that the covariance between x1 and e1 is 0, so that the error is uncorrelated with the observed measure. And 3b, the covariance between x1 star and e1 is 0, so that the error is uncorrelated with the unobserved measure. In 3b, this will imply that the error is correlated with the observed measure. Let's focus on the case under 3a, and then we will look at the case of 3b. If the error is uncorrelated with the observed measure, the error is likely correlated with the unobserved measure. So let's write this as x1 star is equal to x1 minus e and plug this into the population regression function so that we have y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus u minus beta 1 times e1. Now both u and e1 have zero mean and are uncorrelated with x1. Therefore, as is this whole error term, right? That is by assumption of 3a. So under this case, both beta naught and beta 1 are unbiased, consistent. there will be a larger error variance as the variance of u minus beta 1 e1 is equal to sigma squared u plus beta 1 squared sigma squared e1. So that is the case of 3a and again depends on 
both u and e1 being mean 0 and both being uncorrelated with x1, which was by assumption of 3a uncorrelated with x1, and u is uncorrelated with x1 star and x1. Okay, now let's look at the case of 3b. 3b is the classical measurement error or classical error in variables case. Um, you, you'll see either of these terms and they mean the same thing. Errors in variables. So this is the case that the measurement error is uncorrelated with the unobserved explanatory variable, but correlated with the observed explanatory variable. Let's look at this case a little bit more carefully. So we have x1, we can write x1 is equal to x1 star plus e1. And the covariance between x1 and e1, that is equal to the expected value of x1 times e1. We can plug in equation 1 into equation 2 so that we have the expected value of x1 star plus e1 times e1. This is then the expected value of x1 star e1 plus the expected value of e1 squared. And we have assumed under assumption 3a that the covariance, let's go back up here, I'm sorry, we're under the case of 3b, right? 3b, covariance between x1 star and e1 is 0. So the expected value of x1 star and e1 is equal to 0. The expected value of e1 squared, that's going to result, that's going to give us the error variance, sigma squared, e1. So this covariance between x1 and e1 is the variance of the measurement error. And this will cause problems. Let's look at the problems that this will cause. We have y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 star plus u. And we plug in the relationship between x1 star and x1 so that we have this equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x1 minus e plus u that equals beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus u minus beta 1 e. The covariance then between x1 and u minus beta 1 e1 is equal to negative beta 1 times the covariance between x1 and e1, which is negative beta 1 times sigma squared e1. Thus, under the classical measurement error case, OLS results in a bias inconsistent, inconsistent estimator, right? Because the covariance between the explanatory variable and the error term is not zero. So we have biased and inconsistent. OLS is biased and inconsistent.
let's show that the plim of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 plus the covariance of x1 u minus beta 1 e1 all over the variance of x1 which is equal to beta 1 minus beta 1 sigma e1 squared right we just solve for that up here all over sigma x1 star squared plus sigma e1 squared so we have used that the variance of x1 is the sum of the variance of x1 star plus the variant the, the variance of the measurement error that's equal to beta 1 times 1 minus sigma squared e1 all over sigma squared x1 star plus sigma squared e1 which is equal to beta 1 times sigma squared x1 star all over sigma squared x1 star plus sigma squared e1. So observe that the term multiplying beta 1, the term multiplying beta 1 is essentially the variance of x1 star over the variance of x1. For this case, the plim of beta 1 hat will always be closer to zero as the variance of x1 star will be less than the variance of x1. This ratio will always be less than 1. So we are always reducing the size of beta 1. So we are attenuating the size of beta 1, which is why this is called, this case is called attenuation bias. All right. Now one consequence of attenuation bias is the lower chance of rejecting a null hypothesis that the coefficient is equal to zero. There are other consequences of attenuation bias. Um, for example, in policy analysis, which is a, a lower chance of showing that a policy is effective. If the variance of x1 star is large relative to the measurement error, this bias will be small uh, because the variance of x1 star to the variance of x1 will be close to 1. Now in the multiple variable case, if the measurement error is uncorrelated with the observed variable and other explanatory variables, OLS will result in unbiased and consistent estimators. As well, in the multiple variable case, if the measurement error is uncorrelated with the unobserved variable and other explanatory variables, but correlated with the observed variable, OLS will result in biased and inconsistent estimators all around. It is possible for the measurement error to be correlated with both the observed and unobserved attributes, um, and this case is left for later study. That is it for measurement error. Stay tuned to the next video. We will discuss missing data and non-random samples.